Okay, so we are solving advanced level questions. So question number five from where we are starting. Next year onwards, please bring the center module. We'll use that book. I'll, I'll announce in the group itself one day before that you can bring the center module. Are you using center module? Is it? Good? Yes, sir. As in hard questions are there. Actually, it has no theory. Type 1 <coughs> questions, type 2 questions, solid exercises, and then all other questions. <coughs> Anybody got fifth one? Huh? You're not able to see. C. It's getting C. I think this is simple. Vertical component remains in U cos alpha. Vertical component after time t will become what? V y should be equal to U sin alpha minus g t. Right? I have to equate this to U cos alpha. So I'll get t. T is U sin alpha minus U cos alpha divided by g. So that is C. Equator, let's go. Solve for T. Solve this equation for T. You get the answer. Okay? I don't know why that is under J advanced. Okay? There are some simple questions in advanced paper also. Seventh. So at the highest point, which velocity will be there? Only x direction. So at the highest point, whatever is the velocity is actually initial velocity along x direction only. That is u cos theta. Because vertical direction velocity is zero. So u cos theta, as a by the way, I will be going little faster last one hour. U cos theta is a. Alright? And u is what? a root 2. So cos theta is 1 by root 2. So theta is 45 degree. Now you can substitute the substitute the formula for the range which is u square sin 2 theta by g. Okay. So I think this is again a straightforward one. Then you can solve, right? Again, then one. Can you solve it quick? Root 2. Root 2. Root 2. So directly in the formula in the equation. But usually uh, it's not a good idea to remember the final expression. You can use your x and y axis like that and displace it along y axis is 0, use that. Okay? Okay. Understood? 18. You guys can sit there, huh? That is good. Two of you can sit here as well. Here. Huh? Oh, yeah. Use the last year approach. It will be easy. Okay, I'll do it now. There are many questions. There are hundreds of questions. So, velocity of approach along y axis is how much? 3 minus n. Velocity of approach along x axis is what? Oh wait, this is x axis. Along y axis, velocity of approach is what? 3 minus 1, 2 meter per second. Okay? So, 2 into t should be equal to 5. So, t should be 5 by 2. So, 3 minus a into 5 by 2 should be distance of approach. Uh, okay. Ah, ten. So five two are two four zero. This is equal to four. So a is equal to minus one. There is no relative equation along y axis. Okay. Huh? 2 into 2 into 2 is 4 only, right? 2 into 3, okay, see. 
2 into t, this is what velocity, velocity approach along y axis and how much they have to approach? 5. 5 is the velocity, distance of approach along y axis. So 2 into velocity approach along y axis into t should be equal to 5. Acceleration of approach is 0. Okay. Now we are getting better ones. 25. Yes, sir. Again, you the horizontal component of velocities. And then vertical component. Okay, let me solve it now. See, this is 90 degree. So, angle with the horizontal. Is what this is 60 degrees. Right? So, horizontal component should be same. V0, which was initially horizontal, should be equal to V cos 60. So, V is V2 uh, V0. Okay? Now, see here, initial velocity of vertical direction is 0. Right? V by naught. And final velocity of vertical direction is V minus of V sine 60. Yes or no? And V is what? 2 V naught. So V by is minus of 2 V naught sine 60 which is root 3 by 2. So this is minus of root 3 V naught is V by. Okay? What is asked is uh, what is V value of V naught. Where is H? H is this. This displacement this one suppose I am using S equal to V square to be U square plus 2 A S. If I use along vertical direction, I have conditions for V and U, so I can get the value of S. Final velocity of vertical direction is root 3 V naught, so V square is 3 V naught square. Initial velocity of vertical direction is 0. And this is 2 G into, this is displacement, let's call it as Y. 2 G Y. So y is 3 v naught square by 2 g. Yes or no? If that is y, can you find out what is this? This is equal to what? That is the range. How much that is equal to? This is h minus y. Right? h minus y tan of 60 is your horizontal range, right? So range is H minus Y tan of 60. Now range is also equal to initial velocity, the velocity of horizontal axis which is V naught, V naught into T. And T how will you get? T you can get from Y axis, V Y is equal to V uh, y naught minus g t. V y naught is 0. So t is final velocity of y axis which is how much? Root 3 v naught. So root 3 v naught by g is t. So this range should be equal to v naught into root 3 v naught by g. So equate these two and you get the value of it. Okay? Understood? This is the advanced. Then you can solve the same thing in multiple ways. I have just told you one way. You can divide your own way of solving it. As long as you understand few things. That you know, initial velocity is horizontal only. That is the first thing you need to understand. Second thing, what you need to understand? Velocity of x-axis should be constant. Third thing you need to understand.
understand that you can find out the with horizontal angle is 60 degree, you can find out the horizontal vertical component that is 30 you need to understand. And one more thing you need to understand, you can use the trigonometry to find the relation between this length and that length. After that it is just mathematics, nothing else. It hasn't completely covered this much distance. It has covered only five distance. Okay. Okay, finally a good question. Twenty-nine. I found this worship for you as a number. Solutions are not available for this. Answer is available. Oh, this is on collision, is it? We haven't learned collision yet. 48. No crisis is having on. Try to do some start. There are so many things after the winter for the first time. This is not the. Achha, we have learned five types of projectile. That is not the part of theory. Treat them like five numericals we have solved. Don't remember all the formulas or more. There can be many types of projectiles. B, B for Bombay. Huh? B, other? See, you need to understand if you take this as your x axis, that is your y axis, initial velocity of x axis is 0. Acceleration along x axis is g sin theta. G is down, this x, this compared is G sin theta. Displacement along y axis is zero between P and Q. You need to start looking at all these projectile questions as if they are similar, you know, same. Every projectile question should treat them like right. Same thing. That level only when you stop remembering final outcome and solve them with the basics every day. You can use shortcuts at the end, in the exam, when it matters. Right now you're learning, don't use shortcuts. I do it now. This is theta, it is projected like this. This is 90 degree, velocity v. Okay? Let's take that as my y-axis and this as my x-axis. So, acceleration along x-axis is minus, no, it is plus. g sin theta along y-axis minus of g cos theta. See, had it been projected from here like that, then you would have taken the acceleration to be negative. Right? You understand? Your x-axis is like that. So, acceleration along x axis is positive. Velocity along x axis is 0 initially. And initial velocity along y axis is given p. p is also given. So, if p is given, I can use s equal to ut plus half a t square along y axis. Along y axis, this will be 0. So, this is v p minus half times acceleration is what? g minus of g cos theta into t square so basically I am getting v to t 
as gt square by 2 cos theta. So this is one of the equation, condition I am getting here. Alright? And this is PQ is asked. So I will be using S equal to ut plus half t square in the x direction. So PQ is let's say range R is equal to ux is what 0 plus expression is g sin theta into t square. Alright? So you can see that you are getting gt square by 2 into sin theta. And gt square by 2 is vt by cos theta. Look at this equation. gt square by 2 is vt by cos theta. So I will substitute that here vt by cos theta. This into sin theta. So I am getting vt tan theta. So answer is D. Okay. There is nothing new in terms of concepts we have done. Just that the question is twisted. If you if you have this proper understanding of basics, as in how to approach a projectile question, you will be able to solve this question also. Just have to take x and y axis and use the equation of motion along x and along y axis. Okay? 54. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I have done it. I have done it. Okay, so since many of you have done this question, we will move to the next one. Today we are doing only projectile. Let's go to the data type questions. Actually, a lot of questions have the concepts of law of motion and work energy get mixed up. For example, a projectile goes like this and the projectile comes and hits. So you have to conserve momentum, conserve energy and you know, see what will happen next. That kind of question we can't do it right now. Like almost 50% of questions are like that. Uh, yeah, this one, uh, again this torque and everything is there. So. Yeah, but then it has other concepts we haven't learned yet. 123, please do this. If you get one match wrong, you get minus 2. And column 1, A could have multiple of that correct. A could be matching with P, Q and S like that. If you get one wrong, that is minus 2. It may look easy, but it's not that. Your answer should be written like this. A, B, C, D. In front of it, you write down what is matching. You can write P, Q, R, S, T, T, like that. Okay? Write in this format, your answer. Okay, so try to write down the range and time of flight formula in terms of US and UI. Don't include any sign data cross data. There should not be any data. Try to write it in terms of UX and UI. Then it will be straightforward. You can't just tear it and answer it will pop out. Try to write range and time of flight in terms of UX and UI. Because that is the only thing that is asked for. Maximum height also we write in terms of UX or UI. Do you remember time of flight? Minus 2. Either you get full or minus 2 if you are attempting it. Or get 0 to leave it. Now, how can you write in terms of UX or UI? This is 2 times UY divided by G. Yes or no? And range is what? Range is u square sin 2 theta by g. Okay? So range I can write it as u sin theta stop talking u cos theta into 2 divided by g. So I can write range as 2 times ux ui divided by g. Okay? You remember maximum height? How you will write maximum height? u square sin square theta by 2g. What is numerator? ui whole square that divided by 2g. Right? 
Now tell me what is the answer? What is the answer for first one? Column A. Column one first. Time of flight. Time of flight is 2 UI by G. Now, is it all? Greatest for A only? Yes. Even minus 2. Even minus 2. What? See here, height, listen there, listen. Height depends on UI only. If UI is same, height is same. And if UI is same, time of flight is same. Height is equal for A and B. So time of flight will also be equal for A and B. So A is for R. A is matching with R. Understood? Now, uh, let's take a uh, ux into ui d I, I don't need to go in sequence you understand that i need, i don't need to go in sequence ux into ui tell me right range is same range should be same if ux and ui are equal so equal for b and c now ux what about ux Equal for B and C, you are saying. Why not? So what? Time could be different, huh? Time could be different. Huh? Reason you tell me, don't tell me the answer. I am asking you why. Converted into the potential energy. 
maximum amount of kinetic energy will get converted to potential energy when it hits the highest point. So that is your maximum time. H is equal to u square sin square theta by 2g and distance is d. So 2 times of d is a range which is what? Uh, u square sin 2 theta by g time of flight is what 2u sin theta by g you just have to clear out this 